What's up, family? I'm gonna be I'm gonna be starting the live in about two two or three minutes. Bear with me. See you in a second. I want you guys to start spamming that fire emoji. Start spamming that fire emoji. What's up, family? Can you guys hear me? If you guys can hear me, spam that fire emoji. Spam that fire emoji. What's up, family? God bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight's teaching, or this afternoon's teaching, is going to be very powerful. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get to the root of why you guys might be dealing with the Jezebel spirit. Um, you've casted her out of you. You know, she's came, you've, you've gotten deliverance for some of you. Some of you may have gotten deliverance so many different times and she keeps coming back into your life. She keeps coming back into your life. She keeps the, the patterns, the cycles continue to happen. You're wondering what's going on. Why does this keep happening? Why do I keep going through the same patterns? You've surrendered to God. You've repented and you've fleed from fornication. I'm speaking to the ones who have truly repented. All right. Because not everybody really wants to repent of certain things like fornication and porn and all that stuff. But if you've repented of the sexual immorality, you've repented of the control, the witchcraft, the evil eyes, the idolatry, tarot cards, you know, all these things. And you're on fire for Jesus, baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. You're on fire for God, but you keep going through the same attacks of Jezebel. 
having issues, having a child, pregnancy issues, issues with cycles. You're praying and you're praying and you're praying and you're one, you're wondering why. You're submitting to your husband. You're doing a great job as a woman of God, as a wife, Proverbs 31 10, but you're still dealing with the attacks of Jezebel. If that's you, I want you to put a one in the chat. Put a one in the chat and let me know if that's you. Again, family, we have Jesus <laughs> over Jezebel. Jesus over Jezebel t-shirts where she's literally getting thrown off the balcony. I want you guys to support the ministry. Go to the website and make sure to buy one, grab one. It definitely um, it goes towards what we're doing here at the ROC, spreading revival to the nations. This Saturday, we're going to be having a mass deliverance here in Central Florida. If you've been thinking about coming, if you're in need of deliverance, of healing, you need to come through. Man, last night for the, mid the midweek service, there was about three people, if I'm not mistaken, whose eyes were open, that they were they had blurry vision. They couldn't see far and, got, and the Holy Spirit healed them and opened up their eyes. We saw healing miracles last night deliverance miracles last night people repenting of fornication souls were saved last night it was a powerful service a lot a lot of deliverance happened last night but my brothers and my sisters that was just the preview to this weekend if you need deliverance this weekend is the weekend to come pull up if you know you've been dealing with some issues and and you want freedom and that's for those who truly like, i'm gonna say this it's for the christians the, the actual christians who are saved if you know you need deliverance, look, the deliverance is the children's bread, just like healing is as well. God wants to, to deliver and heal his children. He doesn't want you to keep dealing with these demonic cycles, these issues, these altars, these spirits. So come to the center on Saturday and receive your freedom. Today, I want to talk about altars. I did a teaching on this um, a few weeks ago, and I actually just got done with an interview with a mighty man of God, a general in the in the faith, Dr. Um, Francis Miles, who um, has a really, really, really powerful series on the teaching of altars. Um, I'm going to be dropping that interview next Friday, Lord willing. Um, that's the plan. It's going to really bless a lot of you guys. But today I want to talk about altars, why they're so important, and how Jezebel is empowered from the altar of witchcraft. All right, because some of you, what you're dealing with, is you're not dealing with just the spirit, you're dealing with the altar. And if there's a spirit, there's always an altar. Spirits cannot function here on this earth without an altar. An altar is the gate, is the gateway. It's the way that any type of spirit can access this world. And let me tell you something. That's every spirit, including the angels, including Jesus himself. Jesus could not access this world without the altar of a human vessel. Jesus could not speak to the father without the altar on top of the mountain to access to access the father an altar was always on a high place an altar was always built abraham had to had to build an altar to speak to god you see jacob his grandson you know two generations later who um, went to that exact same space place to lay his head and fell asleep went, got taken into a trance or a vision or dream whatever it was and saw jacob's ladder the angels ascending and descending Altars are all throughout the word of God. You even see it in the New Testament. You see it in the Old Testament. Altars are biblical. So today we're going to talk about some deeper stuff, man. I know some of you are still at the, you know, the elementary stages of just repenting from fornication or repenting from, you know, pornography. And it, that's okay. You know what I'm saying? You, wherever you're at, you're at. Hopefully you can grow. But this is going to definitely bless those who are already like, hey, you've repented. You want, you want, you want to, you want to grow. You, you don't know what's going on. You're going through the same cycles of Jezebel. My brothers and my sisters, if that's you, I want you to put a two in the chat so I can know how many people on here are dealing with that because this teaching is going to bless you. If you're watching this live stream later on, later on when it's posted, praise God, what I want you guys to do right now, I want you guys to start smashing that like button. Let's get it over. Let's get it over a hundred likes. Come on. Start smashing that like button. Look at all those twos. Wow. This is about to be beautiful. It's going to bless you. It's going to teach you. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to strengthen you. Hallelujah. Wow. This is about to be Let's get the likes. We're at 67 likes. Let's get it to over a hundred. Come on. Start liking up the live stream. Exposing Jezebel part three. Hallelujah. Again, 
Again, this Saturday, make sure to pull up. Man, who's coming this Saturday? If you're coming this Saturday, put a three in the chat. If you're coming this Saturday physically to the center, put a three in the chat. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can't wait to see you guys come. Can't wait to see you guys pull up. Look at all those threes. Hallelujah. It's going to be a powerful service. I'm telling you. I'm telling you it's going to be a powerful service. You don't want to miss it. All right. So let's talk about altars. All right. What's an altar? I'm, let's first break that down. This is going to be a very, um, you know, brief teaching on altars. There's more. I have more in-depth teachings that I've already released um, in sermons. And I'm probably going to be releasing more. But I'm, I'm just going to explain it to you guys. An altar is... A gate. Everyone put in the chat gate. G-A-T-E. And again, if you're watching this service later on, when it's already posted, you can still comment down below and follow along with us. An altar is a gate. Okay? It's a gate. You know, or you can call it a portal. So what's a portal? A portal is where a spirit can access this physical realm. So spirits cannot access this physical realm physical realm without an altar or a gate or a portal that's a place where the spiritual and the physical meet so how are altars risen up through people god gave us dominion god gave humans walking altars dominion to rise up other altars we have the power to open up portals or altars and it could be demonic or they can be righteous godly altars so there's altars of sin and iniquity and then there's altars of righteousness. So how do we how do we how do we rise up altars? All right, sacrifice. So when we when 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 in order for an altar, let's say for example a witch or a warlock, when they rise up an altar, it's usually in their home or their temple, right? So let's talk about in their home. So what do they do in their home? They'll pick a, des a designated place in their home where they sacrifice onto their deity, right? So if you if you if you guys have ever seen me um if you guys have ever seen me um ex expose witchcraft right when I go into these witchcraft places on the outside they're so, they're selling stuff or whatever whatever doing whatever they do but then there's always like a shrine there's always a place inside of a room where they have a an altar onto their demons where they put candles they put skulls candy they put pictures whatever they want to do they put it there at that place and it's a it's literally an altar onto their demon or demons that's where they pray that's where they make their sacrifices and bring their the, the, the blood of animals or dead babies or whatever it is the herbs whatever they do they bring it into that altar right that's where they sacrifice onto their demon gods Am I right or wrong? Right, right. So this is where there's a portal in the spirit where demons can enter and also be empowered. So let's say, for instance, I have an uncle and he decides to make the, the, the dumb decision to, to worship a false god. He goes and he rises up an altar and let's say it's four generations back. He rises up an altar of witchcraft, right? Let's say onto the false god, false god bow, right? And he makes the sacrifices and he's a warlock and he's, he keeps doing it his whole his whole life his whole lifetime right he dies now even though he died you know hopefully he, he repents and makes it to heaven even though he died that altar is still alive and active that altar is still alive and active and still speaking on behalf of his bloodline so that demon that came in through that portal or that altar or that gate now gets passed on to the children now his sons or his daughters are dealing with that same spirit in their life even if they worship that spirit or not this is why witches and warlocks will take their baby before the altar of their deity and sacrifice them onto the deity onto the deity or not sacrifice them dedicate them onto the deity and they'll think it's for protection. They'll think it's for good, for good luck and whatever it is. But they're cursing that child. Now that child has that altar pulling them into witchcraft their entire life. So even when they're 10, 11, 12 and they don't want to do it and they don't want to follow the same, the same, the same, you know, steps as their, as their father, it just keeps pulling them in, pulling them in. Things start happening in their life. They get sick. Things happen where they're like, they don't know where to run to. So they go to the same thing that their dad did that witchcraft and then they get pulled in through a situation 
right? Because they're looking for what? Power. I want everyone in the chat to put power because they're looking for power. <laughs> everyone put in the chat, they're looking for power. That's what everybody's looking for. Power, right? Even Christians, power. But what that that but what that 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 the 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 son or the daughter of that uncle that is doing is actually going to a demonic power to get power for for the will of the devil, because us as humans we have dominion. We're you know we have dominion on this earth whether whether or not we're saved or we are, in these human bodies these human vehicles of dirt we have dominion regardless because we're we're able to access this physical realm right we're given dominion which is access to this physical realm, so. We as humans, we need spiritual power in order to play out the, the play out the will of anything on this planet. You know, as Christians, we're supposed to get power from the Holy Spirit. But what witches and warlocks do is they get power from the devil or the demonic kingdom, which will kill, steal, and destroy everything from their life. You see, in Christ, I'm gonna take it a little bit deeper. We're supposed to build up altars onto God too. Yes, we are walking altars ourselves because we're filled with the Holy Spirit. But in our home, we should have one area of our home dedicated to God, where we pray, where we fast. What are the, what are the three things that God said to do in the Bible privately? Give, pray, and fast in private. These are things that we do intimately. The word altar in the Hebrew actually means table. It means table. I learned that today. It means table. So when Jesus says, come and dine and sup with me, he's saying, come to the altar, come to the place where you can meet me, the holies of holies, and sup with me, have a meal with me. That's what the Lord is saying. The problem is that, that people are sitting at the table with demons. They're at demonic altars. They're feeding demonic altars through sin and iniquity. That's why if you see some people, right, let's say, for example, in, in Christianity, you know, they, they give their life to Christ, but they can't stop fornicating. They can't stop watching porn. There is an altar that's speaking against them that has not been destroyed. You can cast all the demons out of them. You can pray and bind and, and, and rebuke all the demons you want, which is good. But if that altar doesn't get destroyed, they're going to keep going through the same cycles every single time. And if it's a witchcraft altar, they'll continue to go through cycles of rebellion. They'll be on fire for two or three months and then they rebel. They don't come to church being very isolated, very rebellious. How many of y'all have, have experienced that yourself? Put a fire emoji. Some people in here have experienced it themselves on fire for God. They go back to the world, come back like the prodigal son or daughter on fire for God. Go back to the world, come back like the prodigal son or daughter. You're dealing with a spirit of rebellion, which is a witchcraft altar. That's probably in your bloodline from one of your ancestors that has not been destroyed. And that's why you keep going through it. Let me tell you something. It gets to the point where there's people, where people literally think this is what God wants for my life. No, God does not want poverty in your life. He does not want you to have sickness in your life. He does not want you to have rebellion in your life. Some of you guys keep marrying the same person and getting divorced left and right. God does not want marriage and he doesn't, he doesn't want divorce, right? He wants you to stay married to one person. Some of y'all are dealing with the same sexual immorality, lust and porn. You overcome it. Then all of a sudden it becomes too powerful and you give in. God does not want you to be dealing with that. That is not God's will. Some of you will, de will, will declare over your life you're having a Job season, but if that Job season isn't ending, is it really a Job season? No, it's not a Job season. God has not called you to be Job. God wants you to have love, peace, joy, kindness, goodness, self-control, pa patience, all the fruit of the Spirit. But if you're not having these things, there's something in your life that needs to be destroyed. And it's not just binding and rebuking the demon or casting it out. It is an altar. Everyone put in the chat, altar, A-L-T-A-R, altar. You are dealing more than likely with a witchcraft altar. <coughs> Someone put in the chat, how do you destroy altars? I'm about to get into that. Stay on the, stay on, stay on, stay on the call. I'm going to read some scripture. I'm going to give some more teaching, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray against demonic altars. And again, this Saturday, in person, you come to the rock, I'm going to be praying against these altars. So how do you know that there, there might be an altar in your bloodline? Very simple. Especially those that are, that are dealing with the Jezebel spirit. Witchcraft. How many of you guys in the, in, on, this, on this live dealt with witchcraft yourself? That means you went to a tarot card reader, voodoo, santeria. You, you, uh, you, you used to believe in horoscopes, zodiac signs, crystals, evil eyes. How many of y'all did that or had somebody else in your family that did that? If, you, if that's you, put a one in the chat. 
I'm talking about somebody in your bloodline. Put a one in the chat. Look at all those ones, my God. So again, some of you might have getting, got delivered from the Jezebel spirit, but she, she continues to attack you. You continue to get those dreams. You're wondering why, what's going on? Why do I keep getting these dreams? Why am I dealing with this? Why am I dealing with that? It's not God's will. God does not want you to go through those things. He wants you to grow in your destiny and purpose in Christ. He wants you to go from faith to faith and glory to glory. Some of you have been stagnated in your walk in Christ. You don't see no fruit, no growth. No fruit, no growth, and you're trying so hard. You're praying, you're reading, you're fasting, you're seeking God, and you're wondering why. Let me tell you something. This live stream is more than likely an answer to your prayers. This live stream is more than likely an answer to your prayers. You are dealing with an altar, my brothers and my sisters, if that's you. So let's get into it. Let's read some Bible verses. I love the word of God. If you love the word of God, put, in, put, a, put a fire emoji in the chat and make sure you start liking the live stream. Let's get right into it. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter 33, verse six. It says, he made his sons pass through the fire as an offering to his God. So, Man, I've I've actually seen that in person. I've seen, I've seen voodoo priests literally pass through the fires, the fire as an offering to the gods. In the valley of Ben Hinnaman, he practiced witchcraft, used divination, practiced sorcery, and consulted mediums and spiritists. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Let me tell you something. God hates witchcraft. It angers him. Why do you think I go and expose so much of it? Because God hates it. He tells me he hates it. He sends me to do it. I came from him, from it, so now I'm going back to destroy it by the grace, of, by the grace and discipline of God, right? The discipline that I have in my life and God's grace. It's me and God together. We go to these places and we destroy these altars and we expose it in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why we do it because it's so demonic and God hates it. Witchcraft is a force to reckon with in our world today. It manifests not only in occultic practices but also in rebellion against God's truth. First Samuel 15, 23 says, for rebellion is the sin as witchcraft. And Galatians 3, 1 says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? We must understand that witchcraft is not limited to mystical tales, but has real life consequences. Look, some of you might, might have never done witchcraft in your life, but you're operating in witchcraft. Some of you might have never done witchcraft in your life. Let me tell you something. Last night, we had people come to the front. It was, it was three people who came to the front, from what I remember, to repent from girlfriend-boyfriend relationships and fornication, right? And I looked at it. was two men and one woman, one girl. And the two men, I, I, I told them straight up. I said, if you're willing to repent right now, for real, for real, I'll pray for you. But if you're not, I'll pray for you too, that God will bring you to the place of repentance. Both the men straight up told me they're not ready to let, girl, let go of their girls. And they wanted to keep on dating their girls and fornicating and do their thing. But then they want to, but then they, you know, they're, they're not, they're not ready for salvation period. Cause they don't want to repent. They're not ready. They're not ready. Right. But then the girl was ready. She was ready and she wanted to give it all up. It was an ex who kept coming back in her life. She was at that place of brokenness. But let me tell you something. The other two men are operating in witchcraft. They're operating in rebellion. I see a lot of people come to our church, right? That need freedom. But a few of them don't want to give it up, but they still want freedom. Let me tell you something. Me praying for you for deliverance from demons will do nothing if you don't repent. It won't do nothing. Look, you have the free will to repent. If you don't repent, dumb demons have legal right over your body and rebellion is as witchcraft. So those two guys who were, who were rebelling against God that didn't want to repent of their fornication are literally operating in witchcraft. And who loves to operate in witchcraft? My brothers and my sisters. Jezebel. Jezebel literally fin finessed, convinced, manipulated King Ahab, the king of Israel, to worship false, the false god Baal, which is, which is witchcraft. He got the king of Israel to turn away from the king 
to, to the real king of kings, Yahweh, right? To turn away from Yahweh, worshiping the only true God, to turn to a false God. That is witchcraft. That is straight up witchcraft. To overcome witchcraft altars, we must first acknowledge the greatness of our God. As we lift up our voices in praise and worship, we invite the manifest presence of our Lord into our lives. Psalm 27, 6. And it says, it says, and now my head shall be lifted above all my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will sing off. Therefore, this is, therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. So when we praise God, it's a sacrifice onto our godly altar, which is good. And this is how we destroy demonic altars in the presence of God. So. When we know that there's a demonic altar set up in our bloodline, how, how do we destroy it? Look, so, so many people pray against witches and warlocks. I hear this. This is immature Christianity. I hear this. I'm going to cut the silver cord of this witch, right? I'm going to cut the silver cord of this witch and, and, and do, not for, do, not, do not forbid a witch to live, whatever. Look, you're praying against people, right, who are, who are influenced by demonic spirits. Do you think God wants to kill that person? Or do, how about this? Do you think you have the authority to kill that person? Is that what God wants you to do? Even though the Bible says to pray for your enemies, to bless your enemies. That's not what God wants you to do. The witch and the warlock don't mean anything without the altar. The altar is what's empowering them to do that witchcraft. We want the witch and the warlock to be safe. So whenever you see somebody talking about, oh, I, tomorrow, like if they, 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 they say they're, they're prophesying over somebody, tomorrow, tomorrow or this week, there's that witch and warlock doing witchcraft against you will die. Number one, that's probably not going to happen. Number two, that's probably a false prophet. Number three, that's, that goes against the word of God. That is not what God wants you to do. That is not what the, we're in. We're in, the, we're, in, we're in a new dispensation of grace. God does not want you going around saying, witch die, warlock die. That's demonic. And that, that in itself is probably a Jezebel spirit operating because she loves death and murder. Don't trust that type of, per, that type, those type of people. And don't go trying to cut the silver cords of people. Like, don't, don't do that. Don't do that, okay? Don't do that. <coughs> God, God's going to do it. God's going to handle it. If, 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 if God has the keys to death and hell, if he wants someone to die or, he wants, or whatever it is, it'll happen because he wants to do it. Our job, what we can do, which actually will get to the root of the issue so that person won't go to anybody else, not just us, but anybody else, is number one, rise up our own godly altar to protect our home, right? Pick a consecrated place in our home that we pray and worship and sat, like literally it's only for God. That will be our altar, our, our altar on the God and also pray against the demonic altars. We had a woman of God one time. Her name is Nina. I don't know if she's on. I don't know if she's moderating. She's, she's, she's actually one of our moderators. I think she's on here. I remember she came to the um, the church when she first came. Man, she had a whole bunch of sicknesses and diseases, taking a whole bunch of medications, all types of stuff. Her testimony's online, right? And she came to the front, and I remember, I remember, I had prayed against an altar that was risen up through adultery in her bloodline. I prayed against an altar that was risen up through adultery in her bloodline, and it was so random. I heard the Holy Spirit say that, right? The Holy Spirit had told me, talked to me about adultery, like renounce, repent for that, and, and, and I prayed against the altar that came up through adultery. I just heard it by the Spirit, was being obedient, didn't truly have full full knowledge and revelation on altars like that yet, but I still, I still prayed. My brothers and my sisters, she got completely healed. No medication needed that she'd been taking for a long time. Her testimonies on my YouTube channel got completely healed, and I mean, we both were like, Man, I, I didn't know it was because there was an altar of idolatry. I just was, I was listening to the Holy Spirit. He was, he just wanted her to be healed. See, there she goes. There goes Nina. And she, and she got healed. It was an altar that was risen up in her bloodline through adultery on, I think it was her father's side. I don't, I don't remember. I was just listening to the Spirit speaking. But what I'm saying is like, that's how serious it is. Altars can be risen up through so many different things. It's the iniquity, it's the sin and iniquity of our ancestors. They need to be destroyed. Look at, she said it will be one year May 17th. Hallelujah. Look at that. Come on, Jesus. That's Jesus, man. That's what he does for his people. He loves his children. He loves his children. Some of y'all are dealing with sickness and really the, really the reason you're dealing with sickness is because of an altar. You need to pray against the altar and your bloodline. It's an altar that's been risen up against you 
and from the past that's speaking against you that because you're not feeding it anymore it's pissed off for example you know me in the world what, what are the things i used to do i used to like sexual morality you know rebellion all these things there was witchcraft altars in my bloodline because my family comes from the catholic church right and the catholic church there's a whole bunch of idolatry right which idolatry is is, is, is being stubbornness is, is as idolatry right that's worshiping idols that's a form of witchcraft so when i so my my entire life it was like a pool so like my grandma which is on my father's side she was a mighty woman of God, right? Listen to this. I'm going to give you guys an example. She was a mighty woman of God. Mighty woman of God. She was a powerful evangelist. She used to, man, she used to cast out demons, all these things. I didn't know any of this till I came to Christ, right? Because because my family, like my mom, she didn't, she she wasn't really into the charismatic stuff. So my whole life, she kind of kept me away from that. She didn't, she didn't like it. She kept me in the Catholic church. And I love my mom. She's actually coming out to catch the Catholic church um, now. She got baptized in, in our church last year, but... And I honor my mom. I'm just being, I'm just, I'm just letting you guys know my story, right? So I remember my dad told me, you know, when I was a baby, he took me to Puerto Rico where my grandma, you know, the Holy Ghost filled grandma, you know, where she, where she had a church. She had a church out there that was powerful, powerful church. And that, that church was an altar. I didn't know this till recently. And my dad brought me to that, to, to her to be dedicated to the Lord. Why did my dad have to bring me all the way to Puerto Rico? He could have dedicated me to the Lord and his home. And my dad wasn't even living right in the Lord. He was living a whole lifestyle of rebellion as well. But why did my dad have to go to Puerto Rico? My grandma could have came to Florida. My grandma could have came to whatever. No, but God, God told him, right, to take me all the way to Puerto Rico, to the mountains in the middle. It's called, it's called Utuado, Puerto Rico. That's in the mountains, in the boonies of Puerto Rico, in the cut, in the sticks, all the way to my grandma where that altar was for her to dedicate me to the Lord, praying, praying the Spirit over me and anoint me with oil. That altar, because she because she dedicated me to God through that altar, spoke for my life. So my entire life, I always got away with things. Always got away with things that my friends would get caught with. Always got away with little things. I would always get away with things, even though I did so much rebellious things. So we, I had two altars speaking against me. I had the altar of idolatry and witchcraft, right? Speaking against me from the from the the, the Catholic Church, from the, the the idol worship, and then I had my grandma's altar on the other side, Holy Spirit filled altar, speaking for me. So it was a battle of altars, right? Thank God that my even though my grandma passed away when I was seventeen, the sacrifice she made on that altar through fasting and prayer. I mean, my grandma, I found out later, she fasted for forty days and forty nights twice, right? Like like powerful woman of God. Like, I mean, it was, I mean, people knew about her. That altar still to this day speaks for me and spoke for me before. Why do you think my, my brother got saved? My dad got saved. My mom got saved. Like she even came out, she's coming out of the Catholic church almost all the way, but she got baptized in, in our church and that's big. Like she, she would have never got baptized before when I, when I used to tell her. So it's like, it's an altar that was risen up. But remember there was altar speaking against me too. So it was a war. So some of you right now are dealing with an altar in your bloodline through any witchcraft iniquity. Some of you, your mother and father, unfortunately, were not in the faith. They were they committed adultery. They were alcoholics, addicts. If you look back in your bloodline, you don't really see any praying people. If you if you know people that were truly on fire and you know when someone's really Holy Ghost filled, there's probably an altar that's speaking for you, that's speaking for you, a good, a good altar to bless you. But if there's not, if there's not any, you need to connect to the right altar so not only do you need to rise up an altar in your home being covered under a ministry is connecting to that altar my brothers and my sisters when you're covered under a ministry you're connected to that altar that's why it's so important to submit to a leader who has watch over your soul and make sure that the person you're submitted to the altar the the the, the covering is truly from god because again i have seen pure men of god pure like look i've seen prophets who are pure gifted seers get under the wrong covering aka aka altar and get shifted into perversion shifted into false teaching because of crazy stuff because they went under the wrong altar the altar that you're under will affect you i want everyone to put in the chat altars matter 
who your spiritual father is, spiritual mother, who covers you, the ministry you're part of. I promise you, if you go to a lukewarm church, you could be on fire for God. And I'm gonna give you an example. You can be on fire for God right now. You could be on blazing fire. You go and you connect to an altar and join the, join a church that's lukewarm. I promise you, in no time, you're gonna be lukewarm. You're not even gonna know how it happened. Slowly you'll drift away and you'll become you'll become lukewarm. I'm telling you, altars genuinely, truly, really matter. The altar that you're covered by really does matter. That's why you want to make sure you're connected to the right altars. It's not a joke. You come to the ROC, right? People here locally and even for the people that are part of the Leadership School of Revival. The minute you join internationally on the, on the digital space or locally, I promise you, all of a sudden, you're going to have a fire for evangelism. All of a sudden, you're going to start moving in the prophetic more. You're going to start You're going to start getting some deliverance and healing in your family. I promise you, your, your, your family members and your friends will start getting saved. That's the altar that speaks for this ministry. How many ROC people do we have on here locally and also internationally that can truly say your lives were changed when you joined The Rock? I want you guys to testify in the chat real quick for those that that are maybe aren't part of the ministry. I want you to testify in the chat real quick. It doesn't have to be a long testimony, but just testify. I'm telling you, man, it is true. When you connect to an altar and you truly look, I'm telling you, now let's talk about it. How do you know that somebody's connected to an altar? Very simple. Witches and warlocks do this and Christians do it. Remember, remember the devil takes everything God does and perverts it. Now watch this. What did Jesus say to do in private? Because intimacy, right, is where we meet God, right? Think about, okay, when they went to the holies of holies and the tabernacles and temples, they were going to meet God. So when we go to, in a secret place to meet God, we're going to the holies of holies. And what does God say to do in private? Because this is how we sacrifice, right? This is how we sacrifice on, onto our altar. Praying, right? Fasting and giving. This is the same thing that witches and warlocks do. They pray to their demon gods, they fast to their demon gods and you'll always see witches and warlocks giving money to their demon gods. Even witches and warlocks understand the, the power of praying and fasting and giving, but they're, it's perverted and they're, and they're deceived to do it onto the devil. The devil wants to be like God, but he can't. He's a counterfeit. But then you got Christians who don't believe in those three things and that's why they're not connected to certain altars. When you're connected to an altar of a ministry, you're going to pray for the ministry and its leaders. You're going to fast with the ministry and its leaders, right? And you're going to give to the ministry. The altar that you feed is the altar that you'll be connected to. I'm going to say it again. The altar that you feed is the altar that you'll be connected to. Yes, you are a walking altar. Yes, you can build an altar in your home, praise the Lord. But the altar or the covering that you're connected to does matter. I'm telling you, it's extremely important. The Bible would not say submit to a leader who has watch over your soul for no reason. Why would the book of Hebrews, New Testament say that? Because who you're connected to, who watches over your soul is extremely important. You go to a whole witch and warlock who comes in the name of a prophet and we see a lot of those on the internet. They claim to be prophets because they got a gift, but they're operating in complete rebellion complete rebellion you go and connect to that altar i promise you your life is going to start changing in a bad way i promise you things will start happening in your life you'll start getting the more demonic dreams you'll have all these demonic encounters you'll start feeling more compromised you'll fall into sexual morality even though you were straight before you'll start feeling man what's going on in my life look i'm telling you right now the altar that you connected to does matter you should make sure you test the spirit of whoever you're submitting to, whatever church. Because look, the Bible, the Bible talks in the book of Revelation about the lampstand and the angel of the church. Every, every, every church has an angel and a lampstand. Now, there's theological debates, but some people believe that the angel is actually the pastor of the church, right? Some, some other people believe there's an actual angel that's assigned to the pastor of the church, right? Regardless, the covering is the head of the church. And I believe the covering of every ministry should be a man. 
There could be other women under him that are preaching or pastoring, but I believe the man should always be the covering, right? So when you when when you when you plug into a church, you want to make sure that that the man of God that you're submitting to who watches over your soul, number one, you've tested his spirit. You know who he is in the spirit. You can know by the way he preaches, by the way he treat, he treats his family. You can know by the way he treats others. Does he truly hold people accountable? Is there discipleship in the church? Is there a system to help you grow? Is there is there love? Is there is is God's power and presence there during worship? Are you seeing souls saved? Are you seeing devils casted out? People healed? Like these are all different things, right? The, that we can say is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Are you being convicted when you go to that church? Are you transforming in a good way? Is your mind being renewed? Do their teachings align with the word of God? <clears throat> this is one of the, bi the biggest ones because there's a lot of people who are teaching right now in the name of deep and revelation prophetic. And I'm telling you right now, that stuff goes against the word of God. And you know that that's, and I'm telling you right now, you start accepting things that go against the word of God, you're going to get God. Look, false prophets and false teachers, they go after the babies. Get in your word and study yourself to show yourself approved. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we're in the last hour where many false prophets are rising. And most of these false prophets, the reason they 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 were they probably ended up false or false because look, a false prophet or a false teacher is someone who leads you away from the true teachings of Jesus Christ. Someone who leads you away from following Jesus Christ. That's a false prophet. That's a false teacher. They're being used by the devil. I got like a wolf in sheep's clothing to get you to fall away. So if you join a ministry and you're, and you're on fire, right? You're on fire <coughs> and everything's amazing. And all of a sudden you start feeling like everything's shifting, like for the worse, check the altar that you're connected to for real. Yes. Yeah, someone said 80% truth, 20% lies. Yes. This is so big. This is very, thank you for peace. Be still. You'll notice that with witches, warlocks, and false teachers and false prophets. When I used to go to the witches and warlocks, right? Let me give y'all an example. When I would go to the witches and warlocks, I would be like, hey, you know, like this is going on in my life. And they would, they would, they would, they would see in the spirit. They had the gift to see. And they would tell me about all of these things in my past that were accurate. I'm talking about accurate. Like, wow. True, 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 true. And then they come with the lies. It's always a whole bunch of things from the past that's on point to get your faith to build up, aka witchcraft control, to control you. And then they hit you with that 20% or that 15% or 10% of lies to control your mind and put you under witchcraft. That's why we have to be in the last hour, my brothers and my sisters in Christ, in the last hour, we got to be like the Bereans. We got to be in the scriptures, making sure we can study our, we study ourselves to, to show ourselves approved. Everything that I preach on that pulpit, I hope and I pray that you go and study the scriptures yourself, because if you're only learning from sermons that you hear on YouTube, you can get deceived. It's like this. It's like food, right? If I take some bread and I eat the bread, right? I chew it up. I, I chew up the bread in my mouth and I spit it out and I give it to you to eat. That's nasty, right? That's what it's like when you only get food from someone else who got food from God. Look, we got to go straight to the altar of God, straight to in relationship with God and his word and prayer and get revelation straight from the throne room of grace. If you're not doing that, I'm telling you, you're going to get God. You're going to think that everybody and everybody's right that you're listening to, even if it's someone you like. Because I'm telling you, these false teachers will dress all like, look, dressing nice is not demonic. Dressing nice is, 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 is good. We want to represent God, we want the kingdom. Hallelujah. You guys see, I, you know, sometimes I wear suits, sometimes I wear shirts, whatever. I, I, I just try to be presentable in the house of God. I don't come looking bummy by the grace of God, even though I need to get a haircut. Hallelujah. But listen, but when it comes to when it comes to some some people, they'll, they'll try to go all out. To, it's like it's like physically they try to appeal to you. So you'll get got. It's like they, they, they're going way too hard to where it becomes seductive. That's when you got to be like, nah, bro. This is kind of weird. It becomes like a show. You ever see those mega churches where it's like a big old show, but there's no anointing. There's no Holy Ghost. There's no, there's no, there's no like, there's no presence of God. 
I'm telling you, be careful what altars that you go to and what altars you connect to. Even the altars that you sacrifice on matter. I'm going to say it again. Even the altars that you sacrifice on matter. Don't sacrifice onto a demonic altar because what you're doing is sacrificing onto an altar that feeds demons. Be very careful what altars you sow onto. You want to make sure the altar is of God. I'm telling you right now, the gospel needs to be preached in the churches. Me, let's say I, let's say I wasn't a pastor of a church, and I, let's say I was just a, I was looking for a church. I'm looking for the church that number one preaches the gospel, is winning souls, believes in the love of Jesus Christ, the the teachings of Jesus Christ, the fifty commands that we see in the, in the gospels, believes in the true word of God, biblical teachings. I'm gonna look for for churches where they 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 incorporate family activities. There's discipleship and accountability. Are they they really they stand against sexual immorality. I'm looking for those type of churches to submit me and my family under because the church that I submit to will affect my family in a good or a bad way. I'm going to say it again. The, the, the altar that I submit to, the church that I submit to will affect my family in a good or a bad way. Be careful, brothers and sisters. I know a lot, I know a lot of new people in the faith, babies in the faith, they, they, they watch my, my sermons and everything, which is good, but make sure that you really, really know who you're watching and, 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 and church you're going to and person that you're submitting to. Be very, very, very careful. Amen? If you're with me, I want you to put amen in the chat. Come on. Put amen. So let's get back into the altar's teaching. Hallelujah. So how do we break these evil altars, right? So some of you might be dealing with the Jezebel spirit or it might be in your bloodline, right? And you want to destroy the altar of witchcraft or the altar of Baal. How do you destroy it? Look, I want to tell you, it's very simple. We take it to the courtrooms of heaven. There's a courtroom in heaven. 100%, it is biblical. How do you think that Satan was able to access God in the book of Job when God said, have you, cons have you considered my faithful servant Job? There's a courtroom in heaven, I'm telling you, where, where, where there's a council this is where the enemy goes to accuse us, right? This is where the demons go to say, hey, they're living in iniquity. They're doing this. And this is where they can get legal, right? So we have to take our, we have to go to the courtrooms of heaven in prayer and take our family bloodline and literally say, God, I repent for all the witchcraft in my family. Even the, even the witchcraft that I don't even know is going, that went down in my family. I come before you and say, God, I repent for it on behalf of myself and my ancestors and in the name of Jesus Christ before the courtrooms of heaven, I petition right now by the, by the, by the authority I have in Jesus Christ and I destroy every evil altar in my bloodline, every, every altar of witchcraft, every altar of bow, any altar that's empowering the spirit of Jezebel in the name of Jesus Christ. And you begin to pray in the spirit, send fire on those altars. I promise you. Those altars are going to shut. <clears throat> I'm telling you, they're going to shut and, I'm, and things are going to just start happening in your life. They're going to strange, good things, strange things are going to begin to happen. All of a sudden, things in your life are going to start to, sh to shift for the better. You're going to start. You're going to start feeling like, man, I got breakthrough. You're going to start feeling like, wow, like this issue that was happening just broke off of me. This is happening. I'm telling you. When you break those altars, then you begin to rise up godly altars. I'm telling you, your life is going to change. It's going to change. I'm telling you, this teaching today is a little bit meaty. I know some of you on here, you know, again, I, I see some of the questions like what, you know, like I, more like elementary questions right now. This is one of those, those, those teachings that are going to be a little deep, but it's good. It's good because it's going to help out a lot. So very, very simple. We need to go against witchcraft altars. And that's what I want to do right now for you guys. I'm going to be doing it on Saturday. I'm going to be praying against these witchcraft altars. I'm going to be literally praying on Saturday against these witchcraft altars. And I believe a lot of altars are going to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Ghost, by the grace of God, by the authority we have in Jesus Christ. Many devils will be casted out. Many people will be healed miraculously again, like, like last night. People that couldn't, that, that couldn't see, I mean, like literally, like people who were dealing with blindness or like a... Was it blurriness and the eyes couldn't see far? Eyes were open, literally. Eyes were open. I think it was about three people that said that they, could, they couldn't see far before and they got opened up their eyes and they could see clear. Stuff like that is going to happen on Saturday. 
I'm telling I'm telling you right now, some of you are praying for your your um your your family members who are in witchcraft. How many of y'all have family members that are in still in witchcraft? Put a one in the chat. Put a one in the chat. Put a one in the chat if you if you if you have family that's in witchcraft. All right, so this is this is actually a way that you can save your family too. Helps help help bring your family to Christ is by praying against the altars, right? Praying against the altars that's in the bloodline. Praying against the altars that they're sacrificing onto will will literally destroy those altars and they won't have any power to keep doing witchcraft. And then the altars that you're rising up in your home or the altar that you're connected to, connected to that's why it's so important to be part of a, a ministry, will, will, will empower you to begin to pray, right? You'll begin to have more power when you pray. More things will start happening. Angels will be loosed and they'll start getting saved. Hallelujah. <coughs> This is why it's important to be under a spiritual covering, my brothers and my sisters. It's very important. So I'm going to pray against these evil altars. How many of y'all are ready for me to pray? I want you to put a fire emoji in the chat. <clears throat> put a fire emoji in the chat. Hallelujah. Someone said, is a church where they don't have deliverance service dead? Pray about it. I, do, I believe every church should operate in deliverance. I believe every church needs to operate in deliverance and healing. I don't know how it's a church if it's not. That's just my opinion. According to the word of God. All right. So. Praise the Lord. I'm going to get into a prayer. I'm going to declare the word of God over your lives. Are you guys ready? All right. So let's, let's declare some scriptures over your guys' life. I want to pray for you. Part these scriptures for destroying evil altars. So right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I just want you guys to come in agreement with me in the spirit. All right. So according to First Corinthians six three, it says, "Do you not know that we shall judge the angels? How much more things that pertain to this life?" So Father, we are we are to be judges even over the angels. We have authority in the courtrooms of heaven, Lord. We have authority, Father, in the courtrooms of heaven. And Holy Spirit, you are our advocate. You are the one who, who, who advocate for us. You are, you are the one who is a comforter, the spirit of truth. Jesus Christ, you stand there. You stand in the courtrooms of heaven, Lord. And by your blood, we are always forgiven. We are always forgiven by your blood. So we come before you right now, Lord. And the Bible says, if we ask, we shall receive. We're asking, Father, right now. In the name of Jesus, I want you all to pray with me. If you want to close your eyes, close your eyes and receive this prayer. We pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ against all the witchcraft in our bloodline. Lord, we confess and we repent for all the witchcraft of, uh, of, our, of us or our ancestors. Any type of ritual, hex, um, um, sacrifice onto a demonic spirit, any curse, covenant, anything we ate, anything we drank. Anything, any, any money that we sold onto the demonic kingdom, Lord, right now we're asking that you forgive us, Father. We're before your throne room of grace and we come boldly and say, thank you, Father, that you forgive us, Lord, and we're not going back to witchcraft. And right now we pray for even the, our, our family members and friends who are being empowered through these altars of, of witchcraft and iniquity and sin in our bloodline, Lord. And we're praying for their salvation, Lord, that you will save us, us and our whole household. Our whole household will be saved according to your word. So, Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ against every demonic altar of witchcraft in Jesus' name. And we declare and we decree that by the word of God that says, again, if we ask, we shall receive. Luke 10, 19 says we, he's given us a authority to step and trample on scorpions and snakes and over all power of the enemy we have power over the enemy's power and we're going to judge the angels so we we declare and we decree right now that every evil altar be dismantled destroyed nullified and and right now by fire be burnt up in the name of jesus christ just like elijah called upon fire from heaven we send fire on every demonic altar of bow witchcraft any demonic altar that's empowering jezebel leviathan any altar period demonic altar in the bloodline through witchcraft and iniquity all the way back to Adam and Eve. Father, we thank you that we have the authority to pray right now and our blood will be washed clean. We destroy the demonic altars in the name of Jesus Christ. 
And we thank you, Lord, that these altars will not empower these demons anymore. Thank you, Father God, these demons have no more landing strip to land. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And let's pray in the Spirit. Come on, everyone pray in the Holy Ghost. If you just felt a breakthrough, I want you to just pray in the Holy Spirit. Just thank God. Give Him thanks. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, that all the altars are destroyed. We thank you, Lord, every altar of Baal and witchcraft and iniquity is destroyed. We thank you, Father, that altars are a, a way that we that spirits can access the physical realm and we have risen up godly altars to you through prayer through giving through fasting lord thank you father that we intimately can sit down with you and, and sup we can eat with you feast with you at your table thank you father that that we that, that that we are empowered through the altar of salvation we're empowered through the kingdom father god the kingdom backing that's been placed on our lives lord through the ministries that cover us through the leaders that that are that are also covering us through even our own prayers and sacrifices lord we thank you in the name of jesus for the kingdom of god that backs us up we praise you and we we thank you again and we honor you king jesus in jesus name and the church says together i want you guys to put in the chat Amen and amen if you came in agreement. I want you to comment in the chat and I want you to put amen and amen in the if you came in agreement. Hallelujah. Put amen and put amen twice. Hallelujah. I'm going to check the live stream real quick. Hallelujah. I felt the anointing on that one. Oof. All right. Wow. That was powerful. If some of you just felt like a lift off, like, like something lifted off you, like you felt a breakthrough, I want you to just, to just put a one in the chat right now. If you just felt something lift off you through that prayer, simple prayer, but a prayer of authority and agreement, I want you to put a one in the chat. Put a one in the chat so I know that you that you felt breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Woof. It's a lot of ones, man. Come on. And again, this Saturday, it's going to be a lot more. Um, We're going to be praying. It's going to be it's going to be in person it's going to be powerful we're going to be i'm going to be laying hands we're going to be doing communion uh, i'm going to be i'm going to be praying all throughout the congregation it's going to be i'm going to bring the oil it's going to be powerful a lot of demons are going to be casted out i'm telling you some of you just overcame an altar in your bloodline literally and your life is about to change a lot of you your life is about to change T today god is going to begin to confirm things to you you're going to start having kairos moments little things little things where god's going to show you i'm with you i'm telling you i'm telling you when i destroyed the altars in my bloodline my god things started changing in my life for the better i'm telling you this is real this is not fake this is this is this is spiritual the bible says my people will die for lack of knowledge i'm telling you a lot of people deal with homosexuality and and, and all this stuff because of altars in their bloodline because of, an, of of adulteries and iniquities and even incest and different things that they don't know happen in their bloodline. We got to pray against these altars, man. We got to pray against it because we can we can pray for deliverance all we want. Look, I've met so many people. My God, I've met so many people, unfortunately, that get delivered and they go right back. And I'm like, God, I, I, God what's going on? And when I, man, when I learned about the revelation of altars, man, it really did bring breakthrough to my life. And I'll tell you this. I just got off a, a, a podcast again with a mighty man of God, a general in the faith. Dr. Francis Miles, man, and I'm going to be dropping the podcast next week. And man, his teachings on altars are whew, deep, crazy, man. Good, in a good way. Hallelujah. Those altars just, man, I'm telling you, man, they just got destroyed. A lot of altars just got destroyed. And this Saturday, some more altars are going to get destroyed. So again, I'm going to be get, I'm going to be giving more teachings on how to destroy the Jezebel spirit. This was a powerful teaching on altars because, man, a lot of people are dealing with altars. You got delivered from the Jezebel spirit like four or five times. You've been prayed for so many times and you're wondering what's going on. Let me tell you something. Altars, man. Altars are real. You need to go study some more if, if you just if you if you feel led to. Go study some more. I'm telling you, God is going to bring revelation to your life so that you can get all that stuff out your bloodline because you've been called to be a, a, a Gideon in your bloodline. You've been called to be a curse breaker. You were sent by God to come into your bloodline to be the one who washes it up clean to prepare for this revival period. A lot of the children that are going to be birthed through our generation, I'm telling you right now, millennials and, and uh, Generation Z, I'm telling you, gen Generation Z is going to be born into bloodlines and and I think it's called Generation X, I think it is. What's, what's the, I don't know what the next generation after Z is. But they're going to be born into bloodlines where there's not going to be as, as altars and curses. They're going to have more freedom to really go out there and win souls. So if, if, if you know you were born into a bloodline with a whole bunch of sin and iniquity, God has probably called you in your lifetime to be the one who cleans it up, man. And that's powerful. 
What a what a what a honor it is to do that, man. Glory be to God. Come on, somebody. If you're with me, put a fire emoji. I want you to start putting that fire emoji. Start spamming it. If you're coming this Saturday, I want you to also. If I'm if you're coming this Saturday, I want you to put a dove emoji so I know you're coming. Man, this house is going to be packed out on Saturday. It's going to be a Holy Ghost party. We're going to worship and praise the Lord like never before, man. I feel it. We're fasting all week at the Rock, man. If you want to fast with us, fast with us. I'm telling you, this Saturday at six thirty. 6 30 this saturday at 6 30 make sure to be here early we start worship at 7 7 7 make sure to join us man come on let me see those let me, if you're coming in person put those dove emojis and look if you can't come in person join online join online it's going to be powerful join online still it's going to be powerful i'm telling you i'm telling you it's going to be powerful Hallelujah. So I'm doing this all week, man. Now speaking about sacrifices, right? Onto the Lord, right? Sacrifice. The three things we do in intimacy, prayer, fasting, and giving, right? Um, again, we are preparing to get our own facility, man. We are we are saving up for it. We are we are trusting that the Lord's gonna move. Um, we we need to get our own place, man. We need to get our own place. So I'm super excited for that. It's coming up soon. I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to make a sacrifice onto the Lord, not onto me. I'm just letting you know where the money's going to be going, which is onto the ministry. But for those that that um, that want to give a sacrifice onto the Lord from this teaching, if it blessed you, if it's been blessing you all week, whatever the Holy Spirit puts on your heart, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to give. And then I'm going to come back, give a few more announcements, and then we out, man. Tomorrow I'll be back on again for part four on exposing the spirit of Jezebel. So I'm gonna give you guys like five minutes to give if you guys wanna give. And if you can't give, say still, say a prayer for the ministry. If you can't give, say a prayer. Say a prayer for real, for real. God bless you guys. I love you guys. Be right back.
What's up, family? Again, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. We got the Jesus over Jezebel shirts that we're selling online. You can check out the website. This is actually Jezebel getting thrown off of the balcony. We hate that witch, and we're going to keep exposing her, and we're going to cast out a bunch of Jezebels this Saturday. I can't wait. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for this Saturday. It's going to be powerful. Make sure to pull up. Again, doors open up at 6.30. I want to see all y'all there on time. We're going to be selling juices and naturopathic things like sea moss and ginger shots and different things in the cafeteria. Make sure you guys pull up on Saturday early so you can buy some of that stuff. What's up, Chris? God bless you, man of God. But yeah, man, make sure you guys show up on Saturday at 6.30. Come early, get a seat. Um, if you're getting baptized, if you know you need to give your life to Christ, pull up with a change of clothes and a, and a towel. Make sure you come ready. Also, if you know, um, what else was it? If you know you want to get some merch, come ready to get some merch. We're going to be selling merch outside of the sanctuary. Um, what else? What else? What else? April, April 20, 19th, 20th, and 21st. I'm going to be in Dallas, Texas, Fire on the Mountain. Make sure to sign up on Eventbrite. It's a free event. I want to see you there. If you're in the DFW area or if you're going to pull up, make sure to come get your plane ticket, you know, hotel, Airbnb, rental car, all that. Come pull up. I'm going to be in Dallas for that weekend. It's going to be a powerful weekend of revival. I'm going to be teaming up with my spiritual father, also my brother, and my, my brother, um, Pastor Mario's, Pastor Mario. He's a powerful man of God with kingdom come. Make sure to pull up. It's going to be powerful. Many souls will be saved. Um, what else? I think that's about it, man. Also, I got my new Sanctified the EP. If you like Christian music, um, Christian rap, go download it. It's my name, Richard Lorenzo Jr. Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube. You can type it in, Sanctified EP. Sanctified EP. You can go check it out. Um, some really good Holy Spirit filled music, anointed, anointed music, man. Let's see what else. I think that's about it, man. God bless you guys. And I pray that everyone who supported the ministry financially and through prayer, that God will bless you abundantly because we need it. We're, we're, we're pushing this, we're pushing this, um, this operation, this mission at the ROC to the nations. And we believe a lot of souls are going to be saved, man. A lot of great things coming up this year. Holy Spirit is moving, man. He's so, he's so faithful. He's so faithful. So salute soldiers. God bless you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow for part four on exposing that Jezebel spirit in Jesus name.